What's up guys and welcome back to the doctor's office. I am Dr. K. Ray Knight here to give you a proper diagnosis and prognosis and everything comics and comic book characters. We are on book three for Witchblade. Oh my god the story is getting so crazy. So uh, last time we left Sarah Pazzini she had just sliced a man open in her apartment. Uh, so we are here where she is cleaning up and having some of her inner dialogue. Um, now the whole entire reason that she was at that warehouse when the Witchblade first attached itself to her is because she is a undercover cop pretending to be a dirty cop pretending to be a trafficker and so her chief of police captain her cap chief captain um he is also a dirty cop like actually so he thinks that she is too a dirty cop but really what she's trying to do is discover what actually happened to her father so um she talks about how you know after her father was murdered um how the police captain was like taking her to games and basically like raised her so he's like this like the closest thing to a father figure that she's had since her father died which is something she doesn't like because he is actually a dirty cop and she is just pretending to be one so um you know she what the way that she set that whole situation up was that she took the money that was supposed to be for protection for the traffickers that she went to go like impersonate as and she took that money gave it to her friend michael and started distributing it to like charities and things like that but told the police captain that they didn't pay for their protection you know things like that so you know she's kind of just caught up in the middle and uh nottingham is actually watching her still um i think she like kind of notices him but isn't really too much paying him any attention uh she does go through like the people in the office like who is actually corrupt and who isn't um who kind of just looks the other way and who doesn't and um then she calls michael and her other friend so that she can talk to them about this bracelet that is now on her wrist and they you know do like a phone scan and try to get some information out of it but it's not really giving any information um and it's something that they can't really look up and you know she's they can tell that there's a lot of change in her she is quite literally always fucking hungry if she's not horny she's hungry and she's eating like man-sized food uh she's trying to give like the food like she wanted to give michael a bite of her sandwich but at the end of the day she just took it and just like stuffed her face with it um and they're trying to figure out still like who are the traffickers is it the cops is it just traffickers is it the feds and she's like it's safe to say that all of them are involved in this dirty cop scheme but but all of the police officers also think that she is a dirty cop which plays into her plan because she's pretending to be a dirty cop so that she can find out not only what's going on with the trafficking what happened to her dad so uh she ends up going back to that warehouse where that attack had happened and she's supposed to be pretending like she's cleaning up but she's really supposed to be like scouting it out and she's kind of trying to gather some information not only for what her boss just told her to do but for herself to figure out what exactly is going on with this gauntlet on her wrist um afterwards she ends up going to a hospital where all of the women who were trafficked are and she kind of just like wants to talk to them and there's one in particular who is still awake who is talking to her and she's like so we like were being trafficked and abused and everything for over a year and we thought you were one of the traffickers but it turns out you are a police officer we're a police officer the entire time and you allowed us to go through that you are just as much of a monster as they are and she's just like I'm sorry she i mean there's not really anything that she could have said at that point because essentially the woman is not wrong she allowed for all of these women to be abused the way that they were because she was looking for uh, things on venter and like sh other people had to suffer as to not blow her case and so like you know while i understand the woman's anger i also understand what sarah is trying to do so of course she's talking to the woman and you know the woman calls her a monster a few times and they're like oh it's almost 10 p.m but there's no nursing staff that's coming to check on them and the woman says that the nursing staff is cut like 
almost in half if not more and there's not really anybody who is there to check up on them while they are in the hospital and she's like what and she's like yeah our bodies don't actually mean anything the only thing that happened was that we were being trafficked out and of course it looks like we were prostitutes so like it doesn't matter like we don't actually matter in the system and in the scheme of all things and so she decides that she's going to stay there and she's like you know you are a monster but you are our monster for right now so you know thank you for coming to check up on us and so you know she's like i'll keep watch y'all go to sleep and as she's laying down there is a like a voice that says you definitely need to get some sleep like when is the last time that you got some sleep and nottingham is sitting at the end of her bed and so of course she's just like who the fuck are you and she goes on the attack and they just start fighting there in the hospital now <laughs> um she is transforming into her witch blade armor as the fight goes on and she does remark that he is as strong if not stronger than her and she has the armor on so like her armor has come in like full force and he is still standing toe to toe with her so she doesn't know who this is she doesn't know what he's capable of and he like after her initial attack he pulls out this small knife and she's like you know um you won't be able to slit my throat with that because the witch or because this amulet will heal me or my armor will heal me so there's no point in you really having that and he tells her if i have this out i think you're misunderstanding because it is not to slit your throat it is of course to tear your fucking head off and she's like who are you and why the hell are you here and he says i'm here to help you sarah pazzini wielder of the witch blade and she's just like the what um intense the artwork just keeps getting better and better and the story keeps getting deeper and deeper so for one i do like the interaction between her and nottingham at first um their their initial interaction with each other is of course to fight um and nottingham just <laughs> He's not really on board because he thinks that the Witchblade Yielder should, I guess, be dead. Um, something that he kind of like remarks to because he's like, you know, why don't we just kill her or why don't we just help her or whatever. And it's just like he's kind of a, a one way or the other type person. And he's been watching her since it got on her arm and he's just been taking stock of what has been happening with her and with everything going on. Um, the fight between those two, phenomenal. Um, her, the revelation of what she's actually doing, pretending to be a dirty cop that is pretending to be a trafficker so that she could find out exactly what was going on and what it is that got her father killed. Crazy. Crazy plot. Because, girl it could get you killed and that is something that her friends also remarked and they're also trying to figure out what's going on so i think she's also and with her initiating how these things are going down and basically like directing the traffic and flow of things like when she took the money and gave it to her friends and then was like oh he didn't pay his money and then of, of course it's it's a weird betrayal right so I actually love the development of the story and I hope it continues to develop um, very well. This, I think this is going to be intense at hand type thing. Um, and I am so very excited. I'm very excited to see what kind of help Nottingham is going to offer Sarah. Uh, so we shall see. But that is it for this episode of The Doctor's Office. And I will see you guys at your next checkup.